What's going on, y'all, man? So this is a follow-up video of Mayor Brandon Johnson doing a task force for reparations, right? A study on reparations, $500,000. And at the end of the video, I told you guys why Mayor Brandon Johnson would not give our reparations, right? I said that this is something they tried already in the area and it failed. So in this video, we're going to talk about the town that's in Illinois, that's near Chicago, that actually start giving out reparations, something that they promised three years ago or four years ago, yeah, four years ago, back in 2019. And whew, it fell flat on his face. It fell flat on his face. And we have to have a real understanding and a real discussion about what reparations is going to be and how it's going to be paid out. Because clearly, this ain't going to work. And clearly, uh, elected officials is only going to do studies, right? So before we get into the videos I want to share, here on Broken Traditions, we're about breaking away from traditions of toxic black culture. If you went to that kind of content, you have that kind of mindset, please join the movement. And by joining the movement, you can subscribe to my YouTube, you can join my memberships on YouTube, or you can join me on Patreon that helps keep the lights on. I appreciate everybody who joined the YouTube membership and the Patreon. It's greatly appreciated. Also, you can find me on Rumble. I'll leave a link in the description to my new Rumble. And you can find me on Instagram and Threads. I'm trying to build an online community of like-minded people who want to break away from toxic traditions. Also, I'll leave a link in the pinned comments to my website so you could directly sign up for my newsletter. Appreciate y'all. All right, let's get to this first video from News Nation um, talking about the reparations payout out in uh, Illinois. This is very interesting that this is actually going on. I think a lot of people didn't even know about this, but let's go. A Chicago suburb is moving forward with a promise to pay reparations to its African-American residents for facing years of discrimination. Clearly, this is a very controversial uh, issue. Evanston, Illinois, set aside $10 million over the next 10 years for the reparations fund. Uh, there are a lot of critics who say this is just a government handout. So, Evanston, Illinois, $10 million, $25,000 to 48 people or 48 recipients. That is a drop in the bucket of the amount of money reparations should be. But this is what they think of y'all. 10 million, 25 grand. But let's call it, let's continue. Supporters say it's one step in the fight to address a history of wrong. They want to be a model for the rest of the country. And Nick is here uh, with a closer look. Evanston is the first to do this, right? They are indeed, Adrian, and it could be a test run for the entire country. Communities throughout the country are keeping a close eye on Evanston, Illinois. That's because the Chicago suburb is doing what they said they were going to do, pay reparations to black residents that dealt with discrimination decades ago, a move considered by many to be a test run for the entire country. $10 million over the next 10 years. It's the promise the Evanston, Illinois City Council made to its black residents back in 2019. Of course, it's not the 40 acres and a mule, but it's a start. Evanston is the only municipality nationwide that is using a reparations fund to pay black residents who were discriminated against and faced a lack of access to housing. To qualify, individuals must have lived in the city between 1919 and 1969 and were at least 18 years old. I'm exceedingly full of joy to see that there are people who are recognizing people of color. It's a long process, but for those who I'm sorry, man, that people of color <sighs> were approved. They will receive $25,000 of the 48 reparation recipients so far. Some have decided to use that money for home improvements or mortgage assistance as other cities like St. Paul, Minnesota and Amherst, Massachusetts look to start their own reparations committee. Critics argue the reparations payments are simply government handouts. I've been saying this since day one that reparations is more than cash payments. And it's unfortunate that that has become a linchpin or a, a, a starting point for people who are against it. Um, there's a myriad of other things in reparations. But in California, a decision to take up recommendations for reparations sits with the state legislature after a reparations task force delivered an 1100 page report to lawmakers and Governor Gavin Newsom. Included in the document, recommendations for dozens of policy changes and payments of up to $1.2 million to those who are descendants of black slaves or those who had relatives that arrived before 1900. The time has come. America must step up 
It's not just the well-being of people of African ancestry that is on the line. It is the very heart and soul of this country. If America is Adrian and Mark, in each of these places where reparations are being considered, questions remain among them. Who will pay for it? And where will the money come from? As for the city of Evanston, they're funding their reparations program through marijuana and real estate transfer taxes. Okay, so it's coming through marijuana and transfer state taxes. That's that's a plus, right? So you guys seen that, you heard that. That's a great thing, right? They figured out a way to at least pay something back. $25,000 to 48 people, right? 48 recipients. So that's great, right? $10 million, I don't think I don't think that adds up. I don't know how to do the math in my calculator. I can't do math in real time like that. But I don't know if 25,000 times 48 equals 10 million. But they figured something out, right? So you see that, you say, oh yeah, they finally figured something out. This is great. They finally figured something out. We're in the right path. I haven't played this in a while, but you guys got to get this one. But, but wait, it gets worse. All right. So, of course, there is pushback. Why wouldn't it be, right? It's, there, it's, it's, it's par for the course. It's regular scheduled programming. It has to be pushback. And the pushback that is going on for this reparations task force is that now is falling under the category of discrimination. And there's a conservative group that is suing for this and saying that this is not right. This is discrimination and you know what you have to put a stop to this so let's play an update of what's going on out in Evanston, Illinois. Check this out. A Chicago suburb is facing a lawsuit for paying out reparations to its black residents. Evanston, Illinois became the first municipality in the U.S. to launch a government funded reparations program but a conservative group has filed a class action lawsuit claiming the program discriminates against non-black residents. For more on this, let's bring in Emmanuel Felton. He's a race and ethnicity reporter for the Washington Post who has been covering this story. What are the grounds for this lawsuit? Yeah, so the conservative group Judicial Watch argues that this this program discriminates against non-black residents of Evanston. So under Evanston's reparations program, if you, either you lived in the city between 1919 and 1969, or you're the descendant of someone who did, and you're black, you qualify for reparations. Because the argument is, during those 50 years, Evanston um, instituted a bunch of racist uh, segregationist housing policies that deprive wealth from the black residents of town. So and that's something that we we discuss um, quite often about how those back those um, housing discriminations back in the day definitely was a big reason for the for the uh, wealth gap in this country. The big reason, and Everson is now trying to right their wrong with twenty five thousand dollars. But it's already pushed back. And now they're being sued for paying reparations to black residents. Let's continue on. So they're saying this is our effort to, to rebuild the wealth that we deprive from you. Whereas Judicial Watch says you haven't proved exactly who was harmed by these policies. And so by opening it up to all black residents, you're discriminating against non-black residents. And this is really part of a, a larger wave of conservative. Um, Before he go on, that's an interesting fact. Because I bring up Patrick Mahomes quite often, right? His children, you know, they, they out in the public. Patrick Mahomes' children, they could be a descendant of a slave, but they don't look black. You know what I'm saying? They don't, they don't look black. You know, Patrick Mahomes is biracial and Patrick Mahomes now have a children with a white woman. So the children look white, even though the grandfather is 100% black. So that is that murky area when it comes to reparations. If they if they only doing it to black residents, not descendants of slaves, that's the issue. You got to tighten up. You can't, y'all have to tighten up. If that's the case, if what this brother is saying, Emmanuel, if this, what this brother Emmanuel is saying is true, that it's only to black residents, just by the look of their face, not by their descendant, their ancestry, and their ancestry, because. We so mix as people that there's a possibility that somebody white could be a descendant of slaves that who suffered from this. Let's continue on. Challenges against programs that came up after George Floyd's murder, right? So we're seeing um, 
you know, with the last year's Supreme Court decision in the affirmative, in the affirmative action case, that the courts are very weary of these programs that give benefits to certain ethnic groups. Um, and that's coming, that's sort of having a clash with all of these programs, um, both in the government and in private sector, like, you know, just recently this week, a, a program that was going to give uh, Black women in Georgia uh, who were starting businesses grants was struck down by a, an appellate court. So th there's sort of a clash here between, you know, how do we fix our, our age-old problems of racial discrimination in a way that, that really satisfies a, a, a federal judiciary that's really only interested in race-blind policy? Do you think the city... And I, I spoke about that in a prior video. I'll put it up here, wherever it goes, you know, up there. About, um, you know, our needing to be the face of DEI. And since we have to be the face of DEI, uh, these conservative groups who are anti-DEI is now attacking anything that's black. So he's talking about the Fearless Fund out here in Atlanta, who started a venture capital group that was like, all right, we're going to help out black women business owners. And unfortunately, it fell into the category of discrimination. And this uh, group was, this conservative group realized that and actually put out a lawsuit. And the lawsuit, they actually won because on the grounds, it is discriminatory because you only giving out grants to uh, black women. And I ain't gonna lie, when that lawsuit came, they should have they pivoted and changed their uh, agenda but they didn't. They want to stand 10 toes down saying it's only for black women. And now they can't give out the money that was raised by the um, venture capital. But let's continue on. We'll fight this all the way. I mean, what are they vowing to do? That's what they're saying. You know, they they refuse to comment for the story of citing pending litigation. But they're saying they vehemently support this program. And they're looking to to fight it all the way up. And, you know, it's a program that they're very proud of. Evanston is very proud of being the first in the nation to institute something like this. But when you're the first, you know, you open yourself up to challenges that, you know, hopefully, you know, if you're the second or third, you've learned from what, what didn't work um, for the first. The, the, the people are at the center of this who would be the recipients of reparations. Um, what, what are they telling you about this legal fight? Yeah, well, you know, whoever... It's already happened. So Evanston's already paid nearly 200 people $25,000 each. So this is something that is already changing lives in Evanston. The question is, for all the people who were, so essentially how it worked is they pulled, um, like uh like uh like bingo balls and so if you were later in the the poll you're um you were later in the wait list so uh. there, there's still hundreds of people on this wait list and the question is what it will mean for them it's already changed you know from the people i've, I've talked to it's already i don't know if it's twenty five thousand has changed their lives as much as it felt like a significant acknowledgement to them of of the harm that was really caused here and and across the country by by housing policy for 50 years that you know, really deprive black folks for the ability to build wealth in the same way that white folks were able to with programs like the GI Bill and such. I got to be real quick with you on this, but do you think other communities are watching what happens here before they institute one of their own reparations programs? Absolutely. This is something that it's already happening across the country. There are already people trying to institute these programs and they're going to look to Evanston to see, well, here, what will the courts say here? I mean, we know in California, for instance, they tried to craft a class as they discussed the reparations program that wasn't necessarily race based, but based on the fact that you were the descendant of a slave or, or a person who was enslaved in the United States. And so maybe maybe the court will be more friendly on something like that. We just we just don't know yet. OK, Emmanuel. All right, so you heard that. You see that from the Emmanuel Felton. I, I think a lot of people going to back away from this. I think these people who are doing these studies is going to start backing away from paying out reparations. I mean, we're talking about $25,000. We're not talking about what reparations is really worth. We're not talking about, you know, the, the, the Bank of America, the Chase, the New York Life, the, the companies that that benefited from slavery that's still operating to this day, Deontay Wilder voice, that is still operating, that got a leg up for being a great company. We just talking about housing discrimination that they could prove that it was only given out $25,000. I mean, think about the amount of money that was given out for the migrants. Think about the amount of money that was given out to Ukraine. Think about the amount of, the amount of money that was given out going to Israel. And that's just, recent there's just recent things that we could talk about 
there's no pushback or there's no uh, lawsuits that's stopping those things from happening. But there's lawsuits for this. Y'all better wake up and understand they're putting that carrot in front of you. They want you to vote a certain way and they're going to give you these false promises like reparation studies that's done in Chicago, LA, that's done in New York State, and wherever else they're doing reparation studies. $25,000, $10 million, and they have a way to get the money. The money, the way they're getting the money is from marijuana sales. How, how, how quick you think they're going to get $10 million in taxes from marijuana sales? That's not going to take long. The way they tax on marijuana. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about this, this reparations situation. I think that this is very, um, it, it, it's showing the true colors of what this country is going to do when it comes to reparations. That's what it's doing. It's showing the true colors. It is what it is. This is where is it at. And this is how they're going to move. Either you're going to get down or lay down, but you're not getting your bread. You're not getting your money. All you're going to get is false promises and studies. I see the writing on the wall. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments, man. I appreciate the time. All right, man, till next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right, later. One. Also, if you like this kind of content, please consider hitting subscribe and check out this other video YouTube suggested. I didn't suggest that YouTube did. YouTube do not lie. All right, peace.